Hello and welcome to the second part of a slightly better tutorial for Hearts of Iron 3. In this episode we will be covering the in-game UI and the resources you will have at your disposal in the game. Ok, let's get started. The minimap is located in the lower right of your screen. It is rarely used for anything practical, but it can be useful for when the camera goes berserk. Above the minimap we have different map modes which determine how the world will be displayed to us. The simplified terrain map mode displays an easy to understand terrain viewpoint. Green is forest, beige is fields and so on and so forth. The political map mode displays who controls what. For example, Germany is displayed grey and France blue. If one would occupy the other, the zone would be striped grey and blue. The victory point map mode highlights important provinces that have victory points in them. Occupying victory point zones will hasten the surrender of your enemy, so keep this in mind when planning an invasion. Above the map modes you can see the armed forces tab. This is not used that often, but it can be practical if you have lost track of a division. If you want to find out something about a province, Select it and the province window will pop up in the lower left of the screen. Here you can find out all matter of things, for example how much manpower the sun provides or if it has a strong anti-air defense. In the newsfeed we get the notifications that is not displayed as pop-up windows. Here we find out if we for example have troops to deploy or more leadership to spend on research. In the upper left of the screen we find the date and time. To fast forward simply press the plus sign on the right side. There are five different speeds. If you want to pause the game at any time, hit space. Here we can see all the different tabs that are available. These will be covered in more detail in future episodes, but let's get a brief overview. In diplomacy we can conduct trade with other countries join factions and of course declare war. In this tab we will also be triggering historical events. Production is where we build all of our divisions, fleets and air wings. Here we also manage our industrial capacity as well as our convoys. In technology we research new types of weaponry, ships and more. This is where we unlock new troop types. To give this area attention is crucial since it gives a huge bonus to your armed forces if you have the latest technologies available. Politics gives us options to pass new laws and replace ministers in our government. We can also manage our occupied territories and mobilize our army here. In the intelligence tab we can conduct espionage and covert operations. Few give this window a real try but it can give you a big bonus to your war effort since with es effective espionage you can among other things know what kind of troops your enemy is producing and where he is placing them. In theaters you can set different parts of your army under AI control as well as get a good overview of the production needs of different fronts. Statistics makes the number sexual stream come true. Here you can find all kinds of information, for example how many casualties we have taken during the war. Ok, the first resources we want to look at is industrial capacity. It's basically how much producing power we have. This is an infinite resources that determine how many troops we can produce at the same time. It is modified by different laws and ministers as well as descent, but that is for another episode. Manpower is how many able-bodied men we have available. This resource is used for all divisions and for reinforcements. The four resources on the left is energy, rare materials, iron and oil. All of them but oil is used by industrial capacity. These are raw materials that will be turned into for example ships and tanks. These resources are gained from provinces you control. They are essential for your army to work, so a resource lacking country like Japan is dependent on trade or expansion. 
if they want to have a large army. This chart displays how the resources are converted. Note that the raw materials travel through the industrial capacity to be turned into divisions, buildings and whatnot. Crude oil is refined into fuel which is used to power, for example, trucks, ships and tanks. Fuel is essential for armored warfare, since tanks cannot run without it. If you're out of fuel, your tanks will not move. Supplies are all the ammunition, clothes and bandages our army uses. Units that are in combat will require more supplies so the demand will go up and down depending on if you have battles going on or not. If you are playing normal mode, you will have to have convoys that transports the supplies to your troops. In arcade mode, however, that feature is turned off. Leaving the IC resources, meaning the resources that are converted by industrial capacity, we have diplomatic influence. This is used to do anything in the Diplomacy tab, such as joining a faction or declaring war. Okay, that was a basic overview of the UI and resources. I hope you learned something and I will see you next time.